this February 1st meeting of the Paducah Planning and Zoning Commission to order and ask that all of you stand with us as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Mr. Summer, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Benberry? Here. Mr. Bradford? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Mr. Shramke? Here. Mr. Shadle? Here. Mr. Wade? Ms. Casillas? Here. Now, at the first meeting of every year, and believe it or not, this is our first meeting of 2016 because we had no business our first meeting of January, and the second meeting in January was Martin Luther King Day. So tonight we'll be having our election of officers. And in order to do that, I'm going to relinquish the chair to our good counsel, Mr. Key. Okay. The position of chair of the Planning Commission is now open for nominations. I'd like to nominate Kathy Cresselius. Okay. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, do I hear a motion that the nominations cease and we collect Ms. Cresselius by acclamation? So moved. Is there a second? second? Second, okay. Oh, call a, call a roll. Mr. Amke? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Mr. Shadel? Aye. <clears throat> Aye. And since you don't vote, since you didn't vote, your vote goes with the majority, so. <laughs> it's unanimous. So I'll relinquish the floor back to you now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Key. I appreciate that. We are now opening the floor for nominations for um, the um, co or the um, vice, chair. Vice, chair. vice chair. I'm sorry, the vice chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Nominate Ms. Schramke. Second. I have a nomination and a second. Mr. Morrison did the second. Are there any other nominations? I would entertain a motion that um, we close the nominations and that Ms. Schramke be elected by acclamation. Second. Moved. Moved. Mr. Bradford, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Benberry. Call the roll, please. Mr. Benberry? Yes. Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Chair Cresselius? Aye. And I'm sorry, I almost called her co chair because I feel like she is a co chair. <laughs> so, congratulations. Thank well, you. Same to you, Kathy. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's move ahead with the business that we have tonight. <clears throat> Um, Ms. Schramke, I believe you have the minutes motion. I do. <clears throat> I move that the reading of the minutes for December 21st, 2015 be waived and that the minutes of said meeting as prepared by the secretary be approved as written. Second. Second by Shadel. Are there any corrections or comments? If there are none, call the roll, please. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Chair Cresselius? Aye. Ms. Schramke, I believe you also have our first item of business to public hearing. Thank you. Sure, I have the first one. Kathy? All right, Emma. I'm sorry. I think I gave it to Mr. Shadle. You've hey, got it. Come on. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I wrote down the wrong name. I was waiting for name. my name. <laughs> I move the resolution entitled the re re resolution constituting the final report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the proposed amendment to a development plan for property located at 5194 Hinkleville Road, Suite 105 be adopted. Second. <clears throat> Second by Morrison. <clears throat> a little bit of background on this. The uh, contractor is out of Martin, Tennessee and uh, was having a little bit of trouble coming up here tonight. 
but this is the same shopping center that we've been working with for about the last four or five months. Uh, this is for a batteries uh, and bulb store, and the sign is 50 square feet. Uh, for reference, I put the other ones in there for Firehouse Subs, T-Mobile, Sport Clips. Uh, the last one that was approved was 50.48 square feet for the Sport Clips. Questions? Any comments? This is basically the same type of sign that we've been approving for this similar, for the same shopping center. Anything else? Comment. Call the roll, please. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Bradford, I believe you have two items of business for us. To read item yes. A, please. I move that a resolution entitled A Resolution Constituting the Final Report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the Proposed Amendment to a Development Plan for Property Located at 2670 New Holt Road, Suite A, be adopted. Second. Second by Schramke. <laughs> the uh, sign contractor, Mr. Estes, is here tonight to answer any questions that you all have. Uh, but this, both these signs, and I'll I'll tackle both together for Cecil Clinic and Strawberry Hills that uh, both signs are under the 20 percent that uh, typically the Planning Commission is asked to, to stay around um, in both locations. The uh, Cecil Clinic is 30 square feet and both Strawberry Hills signs are 52 square feet. I guess the only question I have is how high up, that's like a two-story elevation, mm -hmm. how high up on that, I'm, I'm trying to visualize how high on that second story it'll be. Uh, 12 feet, 6 inches. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Which business is Sweet A and which is Sweet B? Uh, Cecil Clinic is A. No, I'm sorry. Strawberry Hills is A. Cecil Clinic is B. So this one here that we just read is Strawberry Hills. And it's the exact same size? Oh, for both. For both. Mm -hmm. And is that the existing Strawberry Hills Pharmacy? No, it's the new one. Um, it's going to be in a new medical center right behind where they're located now at the uh, junction of Holt Road and New Holt Road. Okay. It's under construction. They're moving from their yeah. current Previous to location. behind where they're at now. Yeah. I got it now. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. <clears throat> Chair Cresilius? Aye. Would you read the B item then, too, please? I will. I move that a resolution entitled A Resolution Constituting the Final Report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the Proposed Amendment to a development plan for property located at 2670 New Holt Road, Suite B, be adopted. Second. Second by Ben Barry and Shrank, yeah. Just kind of add to this, this one is for uh, the Cecil Clinic. It's just for one sign instead of two. 30 square feet. And the 
This will be the same elevation. Yeah, 12 foot 6 inches. Any other comments, questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Ms. Schramke, now you have the John and Doris Fitzgerald waiver of subdivision. I do. I move that this commission receive and file the application of John and Doris Fitzgerald for the proposed resubdivision of property located at 1115 and 1119 Martin Luther King Drive, Jr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Drive. I further move that the requested approval be given and compliance with all other applicable provisions of the Paducah Subdivision Ordinance be waived. Second. Second by Shadow. Uh, Jet Wood, the surveyor that worked on this um, plat, wasn't able to be here tonight. He got sent to training at the last minute. Uh, but he did uh, ask me to, to uh, talk about this plat. Uh, the reason that you all have this plat in front of you, in front of you all is because of the Board of Adjustment putting a recommendation on the King's House Ministry. If you all will remember that come before you in November, yes. okay. I believe it was forwarded to the Board of Adjustment in December, and one of the conditions was for that interior property line to be abolished, and that's what this plat's for. Staff didn't have any concerns. There was Board we're basically approving our own recommendation, if I'm yes, hearing you correctly. It's, it's the cleanup that comes after, yes. It, it was one more thing on that. They had a condition prior to that they had no um, complaints or something. It, right. It was for the outdoor activity. But, um, there was a time limit on that. And the recommendation that came from the Planning Commission to the Board of Adjustment was to do away with, with that previous um, condition, and that was done at the Board of Adjustment. Okay. That's what the I was. Pavilion was approved. Yes, because they had met the, they had met that um, several years ago. It never was removed. Right. Any other questions, comments? Ms. Schramke. Aye. Mr. Shadel. Aye. Mr. Benberry. Aye. Mr. Bradford. Aye. Mr. Morrison. Aye. Chair Cresilius. Aye. Mr. Benberry, you have the Dusty McBride Do. item. I move that this commission receive and file the application of Dusty McBride for the proposed resubdivision of property located at 801 and 809 Whitney Drive and 156 Pheasant Run. I further move that the request approval be given in, in compliance with all other applicable provisions of the Paducah subdivision or this be waived. A second. Second by Morrison. <clears throat> Mr. Robinson is here to uh, field any questions for this one. Pretty simple, guys. We're just moving a property line 10 feet to accommodate a, a new home. Those lots were bought at an auction a few months ago, and he just wanted to be able to get the type of home he, he wants on those two lots. And it meets all... Uh, current subdivision regulations on minimum lot size and that sort of thing. Now both of the lots are empty? They're vacant. That's what I thought. Clay, I've got a question on the 156 Pheasant Run. Is that going to be the actual street address for that corner lot there, lot 13, or is it going to be the 801? Uh, or do they know yet? Council, I'm not sure. It, I guess it depends on which where the house faces. Okay. That's why I included both addresses yeah. to be Good. on the safe side. Yeah. Just want to make sure we didn't have a duplex or whatever. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Was there a public utility easement? Prior to this, because I see that there's a public utility easement being established right. and on either side of the property line being established. Um, 
so I guess my question is that if there was a public utility easement, it doesn't have to be denoted on here that it's a former property line easement is being abolished? There is. There was a, a CUE on the former line, mm -hmm. and the signatures to, your, to the right of your plat, if you will open it up to the right side, uh, we have all the signatures for every utility in the area okay. to verify and to yep. move it over Agreed. with the property line. Yeah, give their consent for the movement of the easement. Right. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments? Call the roll, please. Mr. Benberry? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Shramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Wade? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Morrison, you have the Lloyd and Robin Phil waiver of subdivision? Yes, ma'am. I move that this commission receive and file the application of Lloyd and Robin Phil for the proposed re-subdivision of property located at 1312 Walter Jetton Boulevard. I further move that the requested approval be given in compliance with all applicable provisions of the Baduca subdivision ordinance be waived. Second, Second by Ben Berry. Oh, it was. I'm sorry. I threw my voice. You did. You threw your voice. Sorry. Uh, Mr. McGrew is here to answer any any questions on this plat. Thank you. <clears throat> Staff did have two um, things that was noted on here for a 20 foot radius to be dedicated as right of way on the corner of Walter Jaton and. Lake Avenue, and also for the uh, property line between lots 12 and 13 to be shown as abolished. utility easements whatsoever I don't see noted on the plat that's the reason why I'm asking any anyone I'm sorry utility easements you know I don't I don't think that I did put any uh, I'm using in the county I'm, I'm not up here in the city very often and, and I, uh, yeah I think, I think there's a 20-foot easement on those these here I, I think I just overlooked them with uh, if, if they require those uh, that's not a problem. I mean, I'll, I'll add those to it. And so. I think our Thank subdivision you. restrictions require those anyway. change it make that arrow I did. any comments mm -hmm. call the roll please mr. Morrison aye miss Shramke aye mr. Shadle aye mr. Wade aye mr. Benberry aye mr. Bradford aye chair Cresilius aye That concludes our new business for tonight. We now have a presentation from Steve Irvin, the city planner, um, about mobile food vehicles. And so we're going to probably, are we going to lower the lights or? Sure. Okay. Sure. We'll move out of the way so you can. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Good evening. Um, I think it was several months ago that uh, Josh uh, submitted to you some information on mobile food trucks. Over the last several years, uh, planning staff on many occasions, more than two, uh, has received requests from property owners within the city or business owners that wanted to have a mobile food truck within the city of Paducah. Uh, when people come into our office and ask those questions, uh, our tip, our answer is, is well, you can't do it in the city, but there is a, well, there is a couple areas that you can do it, and that's only the HBD zone, which is basically from Paducah Ford uh, to Oliver Church Road on both sides of US 60, and only on Lone Oak Road from I-24 out to Bleach Road. That's the HBD zoning, and the HBD zoning, we allow roadside stands, curio shops. That's why you might see a peach stand or, or those types of things. But besides that, in most parts of the city, you're not allowed to have any type of roadside stands, outside sales, or food trucks. So. Um, there was some discussion that maybe we needed to come to the Planning Commission, have a discussion with the Planning Commission, and then ultimately may proceed to the City Commission. Uh, so tonight, um, I'd like to go um, uh, give you some background, um, talk about what mobile vending is, um, maybe some of the positives and negatives of, mo of mobile vending or food trucks, uh, things that may, we may need to consider, uh, various regulations, and then the last question is, is what would you all like planning staff to do next? Um, food trucks are popular and the growth of food trucks will soar in the next few years, generating up to 2.7 billion in revenue nationally by 2017. And that was up from 650 million in 2012. Uh, Paducah has had job site lunch trucks. We, we remember those from years ago. Ice cream trucks and food trucks in the HBD zone. Or may food trucks want to join them in other parts of this city? And it should be noted that I said gourmet quality is up in, in food trucks. What we're seeing is more of a, a gourmet type of experience. Paducah's had many inquiries about food trucks. Uh, as mentioned, they're currently uh, only allowed in the HBD zoning district. Mobile food vending is often in the form of food trucks or trailers that are easily re relocated. Uh, throughout a community. You're going to see a lot of pictures of trucks. I try to get all of those out of the state of Kentucky. Uh, uh, later on, we'll hear that uh, there's uh, several cities in the state of Kentucky that are doing this now. Louisville, Lexington, uh, Covington, Bowling Green, Owensboro. I think those are primarily the, the cities that have taken on food truck ordinances uh, within the last several years. Just more pictures of, of different food trucks in, in the state, what they look like. A lot of resources to, uh, um, uh, to look at. Um, Washington, D.C., for instance, has been doing food trucks for over 10 years. Um, you'll see right in the middle the National Food Truck Association. Uh, almost every state has a food uh, truck association, including Kentucky. So as we move forward, we can learn a lot of experiences from what other communities have done and how we want to proceed forward. Uh, some of the pros, uh, with a reasonable barrier to entry, it provides an opportunity to increase jobs and businesses. Uh, the cost of starting a food truck business can begin at 25000 In some cases, it's probably even less. Where a traditional bricks and mortar business, a restaurant in an, you know, an existing building, uh, may start at 300000 and of course, a lot more. And that's according to the research uh, with the National Restaurant Association. It offers opportunities to provide choices where restaurants don't exist. Uh, we refer to those as food deserts. Uh, deserts. Uh, we don't have a lot of them in this community, but we do have a few. Uh, food trucks bring food service to the market for limited hours. Uh, they could possibly serve populations that currently don't have pedestrian-oriented choices. Uh, neighborhoods where um, maybe some people don't have cars, uh, they could come there for a certain time period during the day to offer uh, food to those populations. It can increase activity in the city by creating a dynamic environment where people gather around the availability of new and fresh food. Uh, food trucks can be a way to energize an area, generate traffic for existing businesses, and possibly spinning off new business activity. Uh, social media used by mobile food vendors build up a certain level of excitement and anticipation that make, can make a positive social impact. And as you start getting in and start researching these, you start to see how that happens in different communities. Uh, food truck rallies bring multiple mobile food vendors to one location, creating a festive atmosphere in the area for a short time. A lot of times that's done in parks. If you can imagine, for instance, uh, the health park in Fountain Avenue, if that was completed on a Saturday afternoon, if we wanted to invite two or three food trucks while there's something going on there, it could create that festive atmosphere by having those vendors there. 
uh, just a couple of pictures, the food truck throw down, that's a, a rally. And then on the bottom right, you can see more of a, a plaza area where they've invited food trucks in uh, and it creates that type of, 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 of environment. It signals to other potential businesses that the community is adapting to the evolving economy and supporting entrepreneurship. Mobile food trucks are a new way of doing business. As I mentioned, Covington, Louisville, Lexington, Owensboro have ordinances, and all of them are different. Communities that anticipate the demand from businesses and consumers may also find that this flexibility signals receptivity to new business models. It is a way for restauranters to test the local market for future bricks and mortar facilities. Mobile food trucks offer opportunities to interact with a potential market, test recipes and pricing, and see if the restaurant is a fit with the community. And I've read quite a few articles where in certainly larger cities where food truck operators have gone into business, they've, they have a, start to build a clientele, and then eventually they, they purchase a building or build a new building and open up their own restaurant in that community. Um, under some negatives, community impacts and conflicts, whether they're perceived or real, uh, maintenance and appearance, trash, noise, parking, uh, both public or private, uh, vehicular and pedestrian circulation are things we have to consider. Uh, underlined is conflicts with brick and mortar businesses. As we move forward, if you all decide to move forward with this, that's something that we will have to address. Is how does that how does the, uh, the, the food trucks relate to our existing restaurants that have a vested interest within our community? Operational challenges on the parts of the vendor, unpredictable weather, inventory management, and the market. Paducah should start by defining what a food truck vendor is and then consider each of the following questions. How long should a food truck be permitted in one location? Should be just food or can other goods be sold? Does the community want to increase activity? How do you address upkeep and maintenance? What hours can food trucks operate? How are customer parking and circulation accommodated? Are they accommodated? Do we limit the number of food trucks? Not just limit, but where do we limit, if we limit? How are food trucks reviewed and permitted? What do the vendors and their customers want or need? How is signage for the mobile unit regulated? Garbage disposal? How should the food be served? Special events? How do they relate to our special events downtown? Food truck rallies are growing. And hours of operation, I put six to 12 just as a number out there, but some are limited to just lunchtime in certain parts of the city, not to compete with the dinner crowds, various things that you can do with hours of operation. Under location, do we encourage food trucks downtown to increase traffic? Does this hurt existing businesses? Are there any areas in the community where the population is underserved with food choices? The possible solution is invite residences and business owners to share their thoughts on where mobile, mobile food vending might be appropriate and desirable. Should we have a public meeting before we introduce the ordinance and take public input? Quite often, as you all know, when we have text amendments that come before the Planning Commission at a public hearing, they make a recommendation to the City Commission. We have one public hearing with the, with the Planning Commission. What I'm suggesting here is we take a, maybe a little bit more of a, an approach of we really seek more input early on before we even come to the Planning Commission for a public hearing. Should food, truck, food trucks be required to be a certain distance from brick and mortar restaurants? On location, some communities place a minimum distance between mobile units and bricks and mortar restaurants or a distance requirement between mobile units and residential districts or limit hours of operation. We need to test location restrictions to ensure that realistic business opportunities exist. What I mean by that is uh, in, some cities down t uh, in, in some cities, their downtown areas, they may say you cannot locate within 150, 100, or 200 feet from an existing restaurant. Well, if you look at Paducah's downtown, if those restrictions are put in place because of how the restaurants are spaced out, you put a circle around each restaurant, you may not be able to allow them anywhere downtown. So as we think th through this and we, and, and we go forward, we'll have to test each one of our thoughts. National League of Cities suggests no greater than 200 feet. However, consider context, 200 feet could exclude most locations in a downtown area, as I just mentioned. Just facts about DC food trucks. 
Uh, they've had them for 10 years. Um, I believe there's 50 food trucks in Washington, D.C. right now. And I know it's dinner time, so I had to show a picture of some food, so that would help everybody. Uh, regulations. Uh, they need to be clearly defined terms. Uh, clearly defined terms are an important component. They need to be clear and comprehensive. Um, through this process, we'll have to figure out what state regulations apply, what health regulations apply, what lo local regulations apply. How do we permit without being onerous? In other words, try to make it user friendly if we decide to move forward with the vendor. Make it easy on them with the regulations that we put in place. Should food trucks be allowed to serve in front of the art school, around the hospital, at the proposed health park on 13th Street, downtown? These are just a couple of thoughts I'm just throwing out, but there's many more like that. Is it done by zoning? How do we regulate that? Those are all things that we'll have to, to think about. Uh, public, private, uh, public property or private property, every community is different. Some communities say they're not allowed on public property. It has to be on private property. In other words, you find an existing parking lot and an existing business, you locate on that parking lot, and that's where you operate. Many other communities say we want to encourage on public property. Uh, you can locate downtown. Uh, you ha can't take more than two spaces, but you're allowed on private property. And beyond that, we're even going to provide property that's public for you, whether it be in a park or some type of public place within the community. Uh, uh, City of Chicago... Uh, uh, two hours, uh, National League City recommends four hours or longer as far as how long you, they, uh, they can be there. Uh, is it just over lunch? Uh, you know, what is Paducah trying to accomplish? I think we need to ask that question be before we try to come up with these answers. Concerns over adjacent property can dictate duration. I think with different parts of the city, there'll be different comments and different thoughts, and that may alter how we handle the duration of how long they're able to be there. Most communities are very specific that only food be sold. Pro this is probably the best approach to testing mobile vending. Some communities allow apparel or even books. Um, Penguin Books is an example. So there's other type of mobile vending. <clears throat> Should the number of units be limited within a certain area? Should food truck rallies be encouraged? Ann Arbor, Michigan established a food court with different types of ethnic foods or regional foods. Um, Standards for trash removal vary often depending on the duration and location of vending. Most communities require race, waste receptacles that they have to remove daily. Um, more trash will be generated if, if seating is allowed. Is seating allowed? That's another question. If seating is allowed, um, you, know, you encourage congregations of more people, uh, a trash, those types of things. Hours of operation. Um, Consider potential impacts of hours on adjacent uses. Is it adjacent to residential? If it is, you probably don't want late hours of operation. Office industrial park, parks may limit to breakfast or lunch times or maybe all day. Others area may serve a dinner crowd only. Most communities require permits or licenses, whether on private or public property. Uh, they require compliance with health codes and other codes. Some communities cap licenses available for food trucks, which can be a good way to test regulations as well as impact, meaning we're going to do a one-year trial on this. We're going to adopt the regulations. We're going to allow six food trucks. I'm just throwing out numbers within our community for a one-year time period with our existing city regulations. We're going to see how that works. Works In a year, we're going to come back, look at it, and see if it needs to be amended in any way. Some communities do not allow tables and chairs. If we allow tables, should we require sanitary facilities, you know, to wash your hands, those types of things. Uh, condiment stands, signage, um, the mobile unit itself is a sign. Most communities, that's what they look at. You have uh, blackboards or, or, or boards on the, on the mobile unit, uh, and also the entire, most of these are, are, are painted up entirely anyway. Uh, lighting is not typically in, uh, concerned. There may be some regulations as, as it relates to at nighttime, try to keep the light uh, directly adjacent to the, to the food truck. Uh, to recap, uh, food trucks can be a great tool to energize the space, provide food options where they are limited, encourage entrepreneurship and business growth, engage residents and visitors in a community. Communities may consider standards that address location, duration, Goods available, a number of units at one time, 
trash, maintenance, hours of operation, license permits, site amenities, signage, and lighting. Uh, the question, as I mentioned earlier, um, how should the Department of Planning proceed? Um, the recommendation that I most likely would give is to establish a true truck ordinance advisory group made up of one, two, three, that's up to you all, planning commission staff members and planning staff. Uh, I believe the goal of the advisory group would be to consider and advise on all food truck ordinance requirements. Additionally, the advisory group could hold a public meeting with interested community members. With, it may be vend vendors, interested community members, owners of restaurants, you know, various people that are interested in this, in this subject matter. Uh, and then ultimately take their comments uh, and come back to the planning commission for the, ultimately the public hearing. But I think the first thing we need to decide is, is something that we want to do and to move forward with. And I'm certainly here for any questions that you all may have. My first question, Steve. Yes, ma'am. How many inquiries have we had? How, what amount of interest is there? I mean, I, we all think it sounds cool, but... You know. I, I bet in the last two years, personally, I probably had five, I'm guessing, four or five inquiries from people wanting to open up food trucks. And several of them, yes, I think four or five is correct. That's from the people that I've only heard of. I'm sure there's other people that may have had interest uh, that I haven't heard because <clears throat> of maybe they called somebody else in the office or, or read our existing regulations. And I know you're talking about gourmet food trucks, um, and I don't know how we would establish someone as a gourmet food truck. Um, I mean, I see a lot of kind of food vendor trucks that come to events, but they sell basically the same thing, you know, lemon shake-ups and hot dogs and funnel cakes and that kind of thing. And whether that's really what we're trying to accomplish here um, would be a question, you know, that we'd Well, I think there. for the most part, from what I've seen when I've traveled to other communities and other cities, mm -hmm. is that they try to find their market. Uh, there may be one that specializes in, you know, very, uh, you know, the, um, Mexican type of food. Mm -hmm. There may be in, in specialty types of pizzas or pitas, you know, those types of things. But each one tries to get a, a piece of the market. I've never really seen that type of food truck like you're talking about that you would see at a fair or a downtown event in these communities. All of them are trying to create something that's a specialty that would tr attract their customer to their food truck. Let me ask this. Looking at it, uh, that it could be an opportunity for a vendor, you mentioned Fountain Avenue. Mm -hmm. And if there was an event there or something in that little park, could they now have a stand, a booth or whatever, a food booth at Fountain Avenue? Right now. And what is, yes, now. I mean, is it permitted? No, not unless it was through some type of special event. I meant a special event. A special event. If the city sponsors some type of special event, absolutely, in all of our okay. parks, we'd be so able to So what would be the difference between a food truck and a booth that sells food for um, a special event? Well, um, you know, the, the mobile units are more of a, almost a, a, a caterer on wheels, for instance, uh, where it, it could bring different options uh, to a... Uh, uh, to a park, but you know, you're right. I mean, certainly uh, we could have something else almost like we used to have in Dolly McNutt when we used to have Taste of Paducah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, something like that could certainly happen uh, right now in Fountain Avenue during a special event. Well, when they have the dragon boat races and they have all kinds of booths on the riverfront, I mean, it's similar, but really we're talking about the type of food truck that would be an ongoing thing. Like maybe they would be there just, three days a week or, you know, not just for a special event. I think, is that? Yeah, well, um, if, thinking? if they're a permitted food truck, if this was to move forward, right. they would learn pretty quickly where in the city they would be able to be located. Sure. Most of them would establish their routes or their favorite places to sure. be. Sure. And every day, whether permitting, they would be out there uh, because that is their business. I, I seem to recall when I first came to Paducah, there was something that was like a food truck. I mean, they pulled into mm -hmm. Paducah Ford over on Jefferson and they sold food and they went to all the dealerships and things. It certainly was. It was a vending truck. Right. Uh, we had the same And thing. it had sold sandwiches and sure. stuff like that. I mean, that mm -hmm. was... A permitted thing, a non-permitted thing? I'm not sure how that was permitted, quite honestly, Lorraine. Uh, it wasn't the type of food truck, though, that went and just stopped downtown. Right. It drove to your business, knew when people got off their shifts, 
uh, those types of things, you know, and opened it up for their sandwiches, and they moved on to somewhere else. Well, it was there for like 15 It was more of a mobile. Minutes, but that, uh, yes, mm-hmm. but then they didn't, like they didn't stay all day. Yeah. Steve, uh, in yes, consideration sir. given the noise, uh, mm-hmm. noise that's created by these trucks by advertising or music or things like that, I know they have the ice cream trucks go around with noise, which yeah. is not really – that disturbing, but when you get several of them, they might be competing against one another, trying to draw crowds. So that's that's one of the things. Yeah, yeah. that'd be one thing she would regulate. Less than light was a problem, but more the sound was. And that's one of the things that I identified under zoning that you'd have to take a look at. It's not only um, the you're talking about to attract. I think you would want to do away with that, but also what type of uh, generator or po- uh, public power requirements are with these also. So that's something that ought to be looked at. I mean, uh, some generators can be loud. If somebody needed a generator, what is the noise associated with that in certain areas of town? And the the task force or whatever you want to call it that you want to get together and, and talk about this if we decide that's the way it should go. Uh, I feel that restaurant people should be involved in that, okay. uh, not just planning commissioners and, and staff. Okay. I really think that anybody that wants to be involved in that, that feel strongly about it, should be invited, because I think, I don't know their perspective. I don't, I'm assuming they wouldn't want one parked out inside in front of them, but I don't know how far away they would feel comfortable with that truck being there. I mean, it's like if we were talking about Noble Park, for instance, and during the summertime, if they were parked in the parking area right in front of the swimming pool, would they interfere with the um, concession stand at the at the pool. I don't know. The same as the hospital and the art school. Who exactly. Have the art school is going to have its own restaurant. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's interesting um, that you bring that up. I believe uh, we're actually looking at that right now, um, and, and that is um, you know having more of a food truck that may even operate the actual concessions in Noble Park. Instead. Regardless in the park system, it would have to be approved by the city. Right. Um, so that that may be coordinated or something, but. Well, see, that would be the answer to the problem. Yeah. You know, that would that would work well. Probably. Do you know what the health department has a special designation for? Not at this time. Trucks. It's you know it was on the list of things we'd have to explore, but I know that, that there's going to be regulations. I'm not oh, sure exactly what they thing. are at this time. Yeah, the they, theater I mean, is about it. somebody who has a that. set definition of what a food truck yeah. is. I'm sure it's on what you're preparing. And there are health to standards, that too, that, you know, cleanliness and, you know, Cleaning maintenance and, and all that that they were talking about that has to go into it. Did you did you notice in any of the cities you were looking at, did they limit the restaurants from reaching out with their own food truck? You know, if they want to get in the game. I think so, I was wondering. Uh, that's interesting because I, I, and I recall in some of my research, there was one city that allowed food trucks, but it was only food trucks that were operated by an existing restaurant within the community. That's interesting. Yeah. So there's every model you can think of. I like the idea of it in general, and I like the idea of creating an avenue for more economic development, and I'm very confident this will do that. Um, when it comes to... Uh, the cons, I think most of them that I saw can very easily be dealt, dealt with by reasonable regulations. And I like the idea of involving restaurant owners because that's one of my main concerns on the con side would be, given the mobility of this type of business, it's an opportunity to get an unfair competitive advantage over brick-and-mortar restaurants. So I, when I see the ordinances that are written, I hope that will be written in there to um, to provide for that. Um, and for Paducah, I think we have an opportunity over some of the larger cities to really tailor our ordinances to our city because I think if we were all to go around here and try to brainstorm and think of the possible locations that if you would want to put a food truck, if you were a food truck owner, we could list them, almost all of them. So that gives us kind of the opportunity to specify locations instead of giving radiuses and things like downtown you could specify food trucks are allowed in this section of downtown and nowhere else. Even around Dolly Mike Plaza, for instance. Right. Preci- yeah. Precisely. In- instead of leaving it to be a piecemeal, is this allowed here or not? Is this 300 feet? What yardstick are you using? Right. You're um, probably being can... proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it, 
My question was going to be if we, you know, you were talking about food deserts where there really isn't competition or there are underserved food opportunities, those would be the places that we'd want to identify yep. and set up as being uh, available for food trucks. Yeah, you can think about those commercial areas in town where there's not a lot of restaurants, mm -hmm. um, you know, out towards the, you know, North 8th Street, out towards, you know, Brookport. You know, there's, there's various places around town that that could help. So what would be the next suggested step that we... Uh, if you'd like, um, you know, you could certainly act tonight, um, or you all could be prepared to come back at the next planning commission meeting after you've thought about it. Uh, and give me your recommendation on how you would like me to proceed at that time. So that would give you all a couple weeks to think about this. And, um, or you can appoint an advisory group tonight and from this panel and um, request that I um, add a couple of, of members from the community, you know, from the restaurant industry, maybe somebody else. That's fine, too. I'd like to informally poll the commission just to get a feel for whether you would rather <coughs> go ahead tonight and try to do an advisory committee or wait and think about it a bit, maybe have the opportunity to talk to some people that you know in the community who perhaps might be affected by this. I mean, it's really... Well, and I think one of the main players that we should talk or you should talk to or something is the Hospitality Association. That's mm -hmm. the Restaurant Association. Mm -hmm. They might have someone that they would like to see serve on this or something. You know, I, I really think uh, that would be a good place to start <coughs> to find out what restaurateurs would like to be involved. Steve, is there any urgency? You, you mentioned four or five. Uh, what happened with those four or five? Or have they been just told to wait? No, they haven't been. Um, when they've come in, I've, I've told them that these are the two locations that you can go in our community. Okay. Otherwise, you're not allowed or permitted uh, to operate in the city. And do you know what they did with that? They haven't opened up. Okay. So it is, it, it would be barrier. beneficial. Right. There's, there's not any, yeah. uh, there's nothing waiting for action from right. you all. Right. Um, um, I think the approach of what, uh, this being well thought through mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I would like to proceed. I'm going to inform just what would you Give me your thoughts as far as what you'd like I, to do. I think acting tonight would be appropriate or waiting either, actually, um, as long as we do something and not mm -hmm. prolong it. Even with the advisory committee, I wouldn't like to see it go out six months and you know just drag on. I think we need to do it. It's I like the competition idea, actually, with the restaurants because we don't regulate if a restaurant can open next door to another restaurant. So a little bit of competition is good. And open up opportunities for business, for the public, serving in areas that I know need, may need food, and I just don't see anything bad about it at all. Mr. Wade? I'd like to go ahead and proceed as soon as possible because you think of the timeline for this, there's really no reason for us to, or there's no benefit if we defer and we finally get an, uh, our ordinance approved and it's, December of exactly. 2016. Right. Yeah. So um, the time to do it, I think, is now. Yeah. I, 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 agree, I agree with Bob in that. I think we need to expedite this, this movement because we the spring's going to be, and it's probably going to be some time before we get something uh, pro forma for this operation. So um, I think we need to get on as quick as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just reiterating, but if we've already created what may be a little barrier, it's just going to grow if we don't. We may be missing an opportunity. We certainly need to be <clears throat> proactive. And, and I think getting the momentum going, letting the people know that this is in the works, that we're looking at it, I think you'll get a lot of feedback. I think you'll get a lot of suggestions, probably more than you really want. <laughs> Those that are thinking that we should move quicker than we're able to. But I think getting the word out, I think getting started, it's a great idea. Yeah, I echo all those sentiments, and I'd also like to say that I think the most important first step is to get a public hearing set, and I'd, whether or not an advisory council is established is, I wouldn't be for or against it, probably more for, but whether or not that gets established before that, I'd like to see the public hearing scheduled as long as, as soon as possible to give people notice to be able to attend, because that seems like the biggest piece 
as from a decision making standpoint you can get you can borrow somebody's ordinances and have those ready for us next meeting but as far as the input from the public on which direction we need to go that's got that's kind of kind of the key first issue exactly I think what steve presented to us tonight would be a great public yeah. hearing yeah agree Present the same thing mm -hmm. and, and it definitely you know, it's be. all questions at this point it's all asking for mm -hmm. input and it's all questions i think i really I'm go sorry. ahead no go ahead I really like the idea of test locations and test time period. Um, you know, if a year, if that's the right time, or six months, yeah. even just and make sure I, we're not just an ordinance like this. I can't imagine it's not coming back and doing some amendments and tweaking to it because we're going to learn things in one year after the the vendors have gone out if we decide to move forward. And uh, but thank you. Your presentation, there were a lot of things that I immediately wanted to talk about, and I think it will spur that discussion if you do show that at a public be happy to. A public meeting where people can come and give their input and talk and discuss, because I think there will be a lot of good ideas that will come out of it. Can we decide tonight to set that? And Absolutely. Your, your, I think we need to give some more thought about um, who is going to be and what – the, the purpose of this advisory group and who will be on it. I would propose a motion that I welcome any amendment to that tonight we authorize the planning department to schedule, organize and schedule a public hearing and also to um, to organize an advisory council. I, I don't have any problem delegating that task to the planning department either as far as um, who makes up that advisory council would be up to them and the date and timing of the hearing also, but that would be my motion and some that we authorize them to do, to, do, to do those two things. Well, I would ask if there are people on this commission who are very interested and would like to participate in the process because I don't want anyone from the commission to be denied the opportunity to participate if in fact you want to. So if there are volunteers, you know, how many how many folks do you want on this on this advisory council? Steve, that's back to you. I, I like the idea of having uh, uh, at least two. How many? Uh, two, I thought was a, a good idea. Oh, you mean from this commission? Yes. Oh, I think at least two. Yeah, absolutely. If not three or four. And then plus. Plus a variety of other people. Thank you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I want. Sure. Could the advisory council be uh, birthed out of the public hearing? So once we have the public hearing first. And maybe some of the people that come to the public hearing won't show interest or passion. Yeah, uh, yeah and also it won't, it won't be really a public hearing. It'll be a public charade or a public meeting. Just right. Right. Um, information. It won't be a hearing. Of joining saying. members be in attendance at that. It, sure. I mean, we should hear what these people are saying to whoever of right. us are going right. to serve on this. Mm -hmm. So why don't we do that first yeah, and then talk about who's So going. what I'm hearing is is maybe the... Um, having a public meeting back here yes. mm -hmm. uh, in front of the planning commission and then after that meeting setting up the advisory. That's what right. I was suggesting. Yep. I think yep. that'd be good. Yep. Does it work for you all? Yes. Okay. And also along the same lines of what I've done tonight for educational yes. purposes. I think so. Maybe add a few things to it. It's an excellent presentation. Yes, very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there any other business to come before the commission tonight? Then we stand adjourned.